Welcome to my talk, uh, Who Broke the Bill? Using Cuttle to Improve End-to-End -end Testing and Release Faster. How many of you are developers here? Okay, that's great. Managers? Okay. Have you ever seen such kind of scenarios at, at work? Nice. Okay. So manager would say that who has actually broken the build. Uh, then the developer would say, uh, I don't know, probably somebody in my team generally, and then maybe me as well. So let me check and uh, get back. Uh, quick introduction about me, myself Ram, senior software engineer, R&D Bangalore, India, JFrog, uh, passionate about open source, love playing table tennis. Uh, let's have a quick agenda of my talk. Uh, so at JFrog, we have been evaluating this, uh, I mean, trying to improve our end-to-end uh, -end test locally. That was the pain point. And the challenges that we went through in uh, uh, arriving to a solution around quickly launching our dev environments which are very equivalent to production environments, uh, more focused on end-to-end -end testing. And we discovered a tool called Cuttle, a quick demo, and then summary. OK, so an ideal development environment would look like this. So uh, developers might come with a different background and with different uh, skill set as well as different operating systems. Say somebody might be given a Mac, somebody might be working on a Linux desktop, somebody might be working on a Windows desktop. But say for example, a new guy joins a team and the onboarding of that guy into the team would be very more like somebody needs to look up a wiki page to set up his complete dev environment, look, going through the, all the manual instructions. Uh, say, for example, if I join a new team, it, it might take a couple of days for me to set up the entire environment and start probably contributing to the code. Uh, so instead, probably we can automate that using a, some scripts or anything to do with. And the main ideal development environment would look like dev, um, develop locally and probably test it locally as well. And more importantly, same as production environment. Uh, so. Uh, as I've previously told, following the manual instructions is little pain unless you have an automation around it, uh, which would mean saves, I mean, probably you might take hours or days to set up an environment. It might be done quickly using automation in minutes. Uh, and also no manual steps, which would mean error-free. Uh, quick reload. So say, say that I'm working on a feature, I would like to test it locally and deploy it locally and so quick reload of uh, cycle. And more importantly, say a developer has a, I mean, was reported with a production issue. How can he probably reproduce the production issue on his local environment as quickly as possible? Uh, I mean, I mean, unless you do that, you won't be able to fix the issue, okay? Okay, let's take a use case here. Say that I'm a developer, I would like to develop a new feature that was given as part of the planning by a product manager. Uh, so developer probably based on the new design, he works on a feature requirement, um, works on a new feature re requirement, creates a feature branch, and then writes some unit test across on the based on the new feature developed write some tests, primarily unit test, then probably commits those locally and pushes to a remote, ideally a Git repository. Okay, so I've seen in most of the companies that I've worked, remote, I mean, end-to-end -end tests are actually run on remote CI CD service, something like a Jenkins or any, anything. So running these tests on an end-to-end -end server is little painful. In terms of, say, for example, I develop a feature, test it, push it to a branch, then on that branch, you would run those end-to-end -end tests, which might probably take a few hours, maybe days. I've seen some scenarios that it might take 24 hours to run all those tests. 
So what actually happens is sometimes those tests fail due to some environment issues maybe, some, some, something to do with the bad commit as well on the code. The round trip of getting back and getting those feedback of a bad commit is huge when you run these end-to-end -end tests remotely. So how can we avoid this uh, round trip of getting those issues and fixing those issues? Just a pictorial depiction of what I said. Say a developer works on some feature, writes some unit tests. If something fails, he works on that, improves that, and then raises a pull request. So generally, as many of you, many, many of you have seen that most of these tests are run on a remote Jenkins or some other open source uh, servers, and then the feedback to get back to the developer is huge, okay? So is there any option of running these end-to-end -end tests locally? So at JFrog, we were evaluating few tools around that, and more, more, more cloud-native way of doing that, okay? So instead of running these tests uh, remotely, we plan to run these locally. What that would mean is instead of you pushing those code to a Git repository, you would just need to locally commit, okay, and amend those changes unless, until those tests successfully run, okay. What I mean by that is instead of running those tests on a remote, bring them back into your local. And most of the developers would have the configuration to run those tests, and most of them would have Macs or any high configuration machines to run those tests. So we were evaluating a couple of tools and we found a tool called Cuttle, which is a Kubernetes test tool, okay? It's a CNCF project approved tool, and it's part of the Kudo builder. So when, uh, when the team was working on Kudo builder, they wanted to test their own operators, okay? So build, they built a tool called Cuttle. Quick history. So primarily a toolkit for writing test, designed for testing operators, declaratively test any uh, Kubernetes objects, okay? YAML-based, you don't need to learn any specific new language. Say you, you might be a Java developer or a Go developer or a Python developer, you can still use YAML-based structure. And it also, I mean, as we have seen, it accelerates the ability to run those, creating an end-to-end -end environment to test those, okay? So, uh, how, how, how to get started, okay? So if you are using a Mac, you can do a uh, brew tap, kudo builder tap. Kudo builder was the project that I was referring to, okay? And brew install cuttle CLI. And if you are a Linux user, you can use kubectl crew install cuttle. And if you are a Go developer, you can do a go get GitHub kudo builder cuttle. So, there are two ways to actually use Cuttle. One is C CLI as well as API integration as well. As part of my demo, I would be demonstrating the CLI, okay? So, so Cuttle is for an application admin who wants to create or automation of creating new customer. Say for example, I'm a Java developer. I would like to run or test my application on Kubernetes. So generally the pain point is setting up an environment, Kubernetes environment. Uh, creating a namespace, running those tests, as I mean, launching your application and running those tests is a painful if you want to go with the Java code or a Go code, right? So, Cuttle provides an easy way of configuring a test suit, test step, and an assertion, which I would probably explain you in the next slide. Uh, and say that you would like to test your application on multiple versions of Kubernetes. So, every six months there would be a Kubernetes stable version. You would like to test that. So. So if you can probably use Cuttle to automate this, it provides launching Kubernetes clusters on different versions, and you can automate that as well. And primarily it is for testing operator, but it can be used for any shell scripts or existing infrastructure that you have. Okay, so Cuttle has three configurations mainly. One is a test suit, which is a combination of test steps, which I would explain in the next slide. You can see here, uh, it's an API version Cuttle V1 Beta 1. It's a CRD, 
custom resource definition, uh, and kind is a test suit. You can see here start kind. So you can use kind using a local Docker desktop or a Rancher desktop uh, to run those tests. Then I would set start kind as true so that I would want to run this test using a kind cluster locally. Name is anything that you can give. Test directory is where your tests are. And the commands, say you would like to set up your environment so you can run uh, a number of commands. And more specifically, timeout. So if you want your test to run, run within 300 seconds, so you can use a timeout of 300 seconds or more based on your requirement. So next is a test step. So test suit is a collection of test step. You can see API version cuttle dev uh, v1 beta 1. And kind is a test step where you can launch I mean, use the commands. So you can launch a shell script that you already have. So it's more like you have an application which you normally test on a VMs. Now you want to test it on Kubernetes. You can still use your exist existing scripts. You don't need to modify anything. You can launch using this test step, launching that shell script or whatever the thing. Next is an assertion. Say, I'm. I'm trying to deploy a JFrog Artifactory, open source one. Then I'm trying to uh, do an assertion of number of replicas post it installs, OK? So the ready replicas is something that we would be testing. It's more like a declarative way of testing the application. So uh, the test to the complete cuttle end-to-end uh, -end structure would look like this. So I have a demo application. Then I have test. And then I have something like an end-to-end -end test. Uh, there are two tests that are configured. How many of you here used something like a, uh, a tool called to automate uh, database migrations? I don't remember the name. Uh, can somebody tell me the name? Liquid base. Huh? Liquid base? Liquid base. Uh, Liquid base is one way of configuring this database migration. There is another tool. Uh, sorry, I don't remember the name on top of my head which is very similar to Cuttle. Cuttle has something like, see, in the install step, you have 0, uh, 0, 0, and 0, 1. So it's more like serial way of running those tests. OK? Uh, I would probably explain at the end uh, uh, the tool that I was referring to. Huh? Flyway, sorry, yes. So we have been using Flyway as well for database migrations. It uses the exact uh, same structure. Liquibase is more like an XML-based configuration, and Flyway is more like an SQL that you can run. So you can run your scripts or the tests very similar to Flyway convention. Okay, thanks for that. Let's have a quick demo. So, are you able to see my screen? Okay. So this is my tree structure of my application, and I would like to run those tests, OK? I'm here. I'm using, I've already installed Cuttle. I'm just running kubectl Cuttle tests. So what it would do is, it would, there are two tests. One is default, another is a non-split, two tests that have part of the demo. And it would run those two tests if I do that. Uh, good thing about Cuttle is it can run parallelly eight eight tests. Okay, so you don't need to. I mean, you, if say you have thirty tests, so first eight would run, then the corresponding once the test would complete, the other test would run. Okay, parallelly it can run eight, and there is a way to actually run a specific test as well. Say I'm working on a feature. Okay, I've added a test. I would like to run only that test to make sure that it passes rather than running the entire suit, OK? So it provides an option to uh, do this as well. So for my demo, I would probably run all the tests, OK? OK, in the meantime, I would probably show you my configuration here. OK, so this is the uh, cuttle test.yaml. It's the uh, test suit structure you have. Uh, you can see I've set the kind as true. So what it does is it I'm using a rancher desktop, okay? And it has Docker installed, okay? So it launches kind cluster locally. 
If I want to use an existing Kubernetes cluster, you can set the kind as false, and in the, in the cube config file, you can configure the existing cluster. So it would take that as an input and then launch the uh, different uh, test on an existing cluster that you have. But my preference is to run locally, okay, as part of running these tests locally. So I would set the kind as true, okay. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add a uh, Helm repository, okay, Helm repo add, and then trying to update that Helm repository to get the latest charts, okay. So I have two tests here. You can see here uh, in the default, what I'm trying to test is Helm install upgrade RT JFrog Artifactory versus Artifactory versus is the open source version of Artifactory, okay. And I'm setting the a flag called artifactory.split containers is equals to true. So artifactory can be run on Kubernetes in two modes with split and non-split. Okay, in one uh, example or in one test, I'm setting it to true. And the another test, I'm setting it to false. Okay, so I would run these two tests as part of it. So let's go back to the console and see where it is. Okay, you can see here. So, kubectl cuttle test, it started with running this test with kind. It created a kind cluster. It downloaded the kind image and launched a kind cluster. Okay, I would use this uh, configuration to export my uh, kube config file and see the running test. Okay. I would do an export of kubeconfig file. So I've exported the kubeconfig file. I'm using a tool called K9s to view the uh, clusters. So you can see the context is kind. Uh, so my test has actually launched two namespaces here, okay? one for launching each one of the tests, okay? Cuttle name, uh, cuttle test and cuttle subtil. So as part of my configuration, I've set the namespace as a random. So it picks up a random name for each one of the tests and run those tests on each namespace. So let's check going into each one of them. So you can see I'm running Artifactory in a non-split mode. So it has only single image and it downloads all, uh, image and runs the artifactory on the Docker container, okay? Let's go back to the another test where we have artifactory running in a split mode, which is the default. You can see different services like access, event, front end, metadata, router, okay? So let's wait for, uh, uh, due to the slow Wi-Fi here, it might probably take 10 minutes to complete the test. But uh, in the meantime, let's go over the documentation of Cuttle, okay? So I was referring to the CNCF project called Kudo Builder. It was actually used for testing uh, operators initially, and they built a tool called Cuttle for testing the operators. So we found this tool to be useful at JFrog. Earlier we were using, uh, before probably a couple of years back, we are using a tool called Chart Testing for testing charts, also known as CT tool. This is also a CNCF uh, project from Helm, where you can test the Helm charts using uh, uh, chart testing, okay? The disadvantage of using chart testing, I mean, it has linting capability as well, okay? To lint the charts if you have done any changes as part of a pull request. The, the disadvantage of using a chart testing is it runs all the tests serially. Say I have 30 tests and it would take probably two hours to run my tests. Switching to Cuttle has made us run those tests within 15 minutes, okay? Uh, and there is a uh, documentation around Cuttle, how this can be used. Uh, as I said, I was demoing the CLI part, okay? So it's, it talks about how to install, what version of Cuttle that you are using, and 
Uh, at JFrog, we also do a little differently from the demo. What we do is, we, we instead of using kind clusters, we launch a V cluster on a namespace and run all these tests in a single namespace. If something breaks, you just need to delete that namespace. So V cluster is a tool used to actually have a cluster within a namespace. Okay. Since we have the capability of having, launching a cluster, Kubernetes cluster, we do it in a different way to save the time and as well. Because kind sometimes doesn't support caching of these images. Okay. But in our Kubernetes cluster, we have a way to cache our uh, images. So for example, if I want to download the artifact image, it's around 2 GB. It would take some time on locally. And if there is no caching enabled on locally, it would be difficult, OK? Little different, but uh, I mean, more relatively same instead of, uh, uh, I mean, in, in the V cluster, we would still use Cuttle to launch this, OK? And as I've said, if you are a Go developer, you can directly integrate into this Go using Cuttle. You can write those tests. Within an IDE, you can actually test them as well. Uh, and good thing about it is an assertion part. Say that your test has failed due to some reason, okay, and you would like to ignore those failures as well. Say for example, okay, you can do that as part of the command structure. Ignore this command or ignore the failed command as well. So go through the documentation. You would get to know about the different uh, structure and the configuration documents. As I've said, it has three components test suit, test step, assertion, and there are something called collectors and commands. Commands is more like within, you can include. Say for example, you, I mean, it's, it's not something that you can still integrate into your existing test suits that you have. Say if, if you want to, if you're a Java developer, if you have an existing project, okay, what you need to do is just integrate Cuttle into your test suit. So you might be launching some Cypress tests or something, anything test. You can launch. It automates the creation of namespaces. That's a little painful. Deleting those namespaces after, this, after the creation and successfully running the test. So Cuttle primarily for, I mean, automating the infrastructure around creating these namespaces and other things. So say, for example, if you want to, if you are developing an API and you want to use Cuttle, OK? So what you can do is you can launch your application in Kubernetes using Cuttle, then write a test using curl or anything. Request response, you can map using the assertion and see the assertion is actually matching the required input or required uh, thing you want. So it can be still integrated into your existing infrastructure. Our primary use case was testing all the uh, Helm charts, okay, primarily. Let's go back to see where we are. So Cuttil also provides a clear uh, logging mechanism. Says that, see, it has found two tests. You can add n number of tests. Uh, maximum parallel is eight. It has created, it has run the command. Okay, say that something has failed. You can actually reproduce the same thing running those, copying that command and running that on a specific namespace. Okay, so let's see where we are. As I said, I mean, Wi-Fi is a little slow, so it would take some time to. So that's the pain point of, unless you have a ca caching in kind enabled, it's very difficult to run the test uh, fastly, okay? That's the reason we were using, we prefetch the images, okay? And set up a V cluster, virtual cluster. On top of it, we run it, what, what, I mean, V cluster in a single namespace, launch all those tests. I mean, once you are done, you can delete that namespace, V cluster is done, okay? Virtual cluster. Okay. So using this, Cartel has actually saved a lot of time in releasing our uh, products faster to the market. 
I'm happy to take any questions if you have while the demo continues. Sure. Can you have a mic? Um, he's coming. Hi, thanks. Great talk. Uh, Want to ask? So this is mainly focused on end-to-end -end testing, right? Because I, if I'm trying to load in my head, if I would also want to test some application changes and code changes, that I would have to build the image locally and push it somewhere and, and so on. So uh, if you can maybe uh, elaborate a bit more on the kind of testing that you are doing. So this is during the release process of the whole stack, not for the application development, right? Right. Say, for example, if you want to test, I've uh, quoted an example like an API testing. Say you're developing a new API endpoint, okay? You would like to test all the put request, get request, and uh, post request on that. So what you would do is, once your application, you deploy, okay? You make a Docker image of that and create an Hamble chart out of it or however it is, okay? So you can use Customize to properly launch that as well or a Docker image for an example. What I'm trying to do is, on a specific name base, launch that application, okay? And write cuttle test. So it's more like calling an endpoint, right? So you can use a JMeter or any tool that you are existing using, launch using kind, sorry, launch using cuttle as part of the test using commands, okay? What it does is, it tests all those endpoints that you want, okay? the existing infrastructure that you have, say you have a shell script for testing those things. So you can call that using the test scripts. And the good thing about Cuttle is you want to test it across multiple versions of Kubernetes. Say you want to test it at 1.19 to 1.30 or 31, the latest version, you can test it. And it, since it is a declaratively based testing, you can probably get all the logs and the failures. And you can also attach uh, I would show you. Uh, you can also get the report either as an XML or a JSON, which you can plug it into your pipeline to see the test report, uh, what has failed and what has succeeded. Say, for example, uh, there might be a chance that uh, one of the tests failed due to some environment issue or a cluster resource issue. What you can do is, instead of running all those tests, you can run just the single test to make sure that everything passes. Does it answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Okay, so you can see here, uh, I like the terminating part. See, uh, you can see it has launched two namespaces. It is deleting the namespaces after successfully running the test. Okay, let me go back. So it would give a summary report of what has passed and what has failed. Okay, you can see here. I'm trying to run two tests, okay? It says two tests have successfully passed. Okay, you can also provide an option uh, when you run the test to, to have a report as an XML or a JSON, which you can actually consume it or parse that to see what test has actually successfully passed. So these are the references that I've previously noted. Uh, Cuttle docs, uh, Cuttle GitHub reference. There is a specific uh, Slack channel on Kubernetes called Kudo, part of the Kudo builder, where you can probably post the questions there. And there is another open source tool that we have used, K9s, GitHub uh, derail K9s. Summary, quick summary of the, my talk. Cuttle, an open source tool, CNCF uh, approved tool. Next is used for local end-to-end -end testing. Uh, we have seen using this tool, uh, most, most of us, 
never see a, I mean, never seen, I mean, breaking the build at a master level, okay, master or the main branch. We were able to release faster. As I said, we were using a, another tool called uh, a chart testing tool. We moved to Cuttle, and most of this end-to-end -end tests are integrated. It's not our team that is using. Uh, it's across JFrog. We started uh, educating people around this open source tool that they can actually integrate with their existing Python tests or anything, more, spe more specifically for testing on Kubernetes. And happy developers and more importantly, happy customers as well, when you probably release without bug fixes. I mean, less bug fixes. Okay, that's all I have. Any further questions? Happy to take them. Sure. Can you pass on the mic, please? Thank you so much for the talk. Uh, <clears throat> testing is important. So my question is uh, about a cattle successor chainsaw. So I work for a bond and we're maintaining a framework called Uptest that is originally cattle based. And we recently migrated to chainsaw that is kind of work and more up to date, more maintained version of cattle with uh, more powerful assertions and a little bit nicer login and this kind of stuff. So have you validated this project? Uh, it worked for us very well. Sorry, I did not get the last point. The chainsaw, chainsaw project. Yeah, I, ha I heard the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you evaluated it for your use case? Did you compare the two frameworks? I'm just curious um, if you have experience with the, uh, with the chainsaw. One. We haven't evaluated that tool, but it was probably a use case cuttle solves for something for us. But I think they have forked most of the folks fork this uh, cuttle line probably improved a new version around this with the further contribution. That's how open source works, right? But yeah, we haven't evaluated any other tools apart from this. Yeah, just in case the chainsaw is fully backward compatible. So if you find a new features in chainsaw attractive, you can easily migrate your test suites. Cuttle sure. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for pointing. Thank out. you so much. Cheers. Any further questions? Okay, thanks for joining my call. Thank you.